This is my half yard Christmas book. You've got over 30 projects and each one of them is using less than half a yard of fabric and it's chaptered into different styles and themes as well. So you've got a rustic American style of Christmas, there's a contemporary Christmas, traditional Christmases and there's even something for the kids here as well so they can get involved not just enjoying what they're, uh, what's being made but enjoying making them up as well. So jump pack full of lots of different styles of projects for your home and of course to make for gifts for your friends and family as well like the tree skirt so this is from the traditional section i love this one it's got poncettias made out of felt all the way around and it's a really classy design and it just buttons down one side this is one of the sections from the kids so this is a chair hat so you can decorate each one of your christmas chairs with a pom-pom hat that santa claus will be proud to wear and then finally here a completely differently from the contemporary section. This is a table runner, really stylish, I think using raw edge applique and it's quilted with, um, with a, a free motion stippling stitch as well. So that's lots of ideas from the book. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple gift bag and this is it. Now you can make this in any size that you like. So you can have little small ones, you can have really big ones. You can decorate it with any kind of fabrics, ribbons, bows, baubles and applique for Christmas time or you could even make it just as a doorstop to use all year round. This is how we make it. This one's a slightly different size and design to the bag that's in the book because there's no point in showing you exactly the same one. So it's the same kind of thing, but just a little bit different. Um, and I've made it using two fat quarters. So it's slightly smaller than the eight inch base bag that's in the book. This one's seven inches across. So using a seven inch te uh, template, cut out a circle. Your template could be a circle template or it could be a plate. And on the outer pieces, I've put some fusible fleece on the back. So fusible fleece has got an adhesive side to to it. If I just part a little bit of this, I should be able to show you how well it's been stuck down. Um, it's got knobbly bits on it. That's actually glue. So when you put your hot iron on the fabric side, it actually adheres the fleece to the back. And that's polyester. Um, if you don't have any of this or you can't find it, you could use a wadding or a batting. But I'd use a polyester one because it tends to be a little bit firmer. I don't want it to be really stiff. I want it to be soft enough to sew. Um, but I do want it to be able to keep its shape. So polyester is perfect for that. On the outside piece, then I've measured a 21 inch strip so that's just within your fat quarter and this piece measures eight inches um, deep and then on the outside uh, sorry the lining I've got another circle same as the outside which is seven inches across um, and this time I've got a piece of fabric that measures nine inches deep so the lining fabric is deeper than the outside but it's the same width it's still that 21 inches which if you've done your sums you'll realize is three times the amount of the seven inches across the circle at the bottom so let's put this thing together it's actually quite quick so the first thing I'm going to do is to sew these two pieces together to make a tube. So the same for the outside as for the lining. But in the lining I need to leave a gap so I can turn the whole thing the right side out. So always go backward a few stitches before you go forwards to stop those stitches from coming undone. And I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm gauging that from the distance from my needle to the edge of my foot which is quarter of an inch. There we go. And the same with the lining section. It's easier to leave your turning gap in the straight side section than it is in the base because it's very difficult to sew a curved piece closed. There you go. I think I've got a, a loose connection with my foot. Oh! <laughs> Well, let's carry on. That happens to me quite a lot. I'll say leave a turning gap in the middle and then carry on saying and completely forget to leave the turning gap. Not a problem. Use your quick and pick or a small pair of scissors and just cut those back down the side. So I'm just, just cutting a little hole in the stitches there. These things happen to the best of us, don't they? See? And I could have edited that out and you'd never have known. So just about, I don't know, three or four inches, enough so that you can turn the whole bag through there. All right, then we'll need to sew the circular bases in, and this time I'm going to pin. So we'll do the outside piece first. Now the easiest way, I think, to make sure that you're on the right tracks is to fold your fabric in half 
on the circle and just finger crease. You could put a pen mark on there if you wanted to. And then fold it half again in the opposite direction and finger crease so now you've got quarters. On the um, outside or the side bits of my fabric I'm going to do the same. So finger crease, mark if you like, and those two pieces. And then I've got four gauges, as I sew this together, where I know I need to marry up those marks. So there's one crease. Have a pin. And the crease in the opposite side. And pin. And then the quarter two and quarter past sides. And we'll pin. I think four pins is enough. There. And then we'll sew. So making sure that the raw edges line up and just be careful when you're sewing um, any kind of circular fabric because uh, obviously part of that circle is going to be cut on the bias. Um, so as you go around the curve it's tempting for the fabric to stretch and we don't want it to stretch because this should fit absolutely perfectly without pulling it. So just keep gently moving this around, lining up the edges. I can see I'm coming up to one of the pin sections now. So that's fitting perfectly. That's just what we want. I keep sewing all the way around. Take the pins out as you go. I find it easier as well. You can see I'm sewing from the circular side, not the straight side. So these will want to argue. They want to fight back because you've got a straight piece of fabric that you're sewing to a curve. So I find it easier to kind of take control from the curved side, if you like. So that's why the curved side is on the top. All right, again, just lining up without pulling, just feeding those edges together so the raw edges meet. Over that side seam, it's fitting perfectly. Still using the quarter of an inch seam allowance, so I'm using the edge of my foot as a guide. Hello. Somebody thinks it's Christmas already. And just carry on sewing in a circle and then we'll do, <laughs> we'll do just the same with the lining. Come here then. Come on then. All right, we'll turn this the right side out and see how we're looking. And then we'll do the lining. So that should be nice and neat with no gathers or puckers in the base, as you can see there. No need to press that actually at the moment. Um, so that's the outside. The lining is done in exactly the same way and then we'll just join the two pieces together. All right, so there's my lining. So I'll leave the outside, the right side out, and the lining, the inside out, and drop the outside inside the inside. Could make sense in a minute. Basically, we need to have both of the right sides of the fabric facing each other. And I also want to make sure that the seams line up here as well. And then we'll have a few pins to hold those together. And so all the way around the top. Just making sure that those raw edges are together. So you might want to take your accessory compartment off your sewing machine. So you have a free arm. Slip that over the top. And so could have put my pins on the outside. Go, there's my back seam. So again, just make sure they sit on top of each other. I'm not worried about the seam being pressed open or anything like that. And then I'm just easing this in as we come back to the beginning. There we 
we go. So there's my there's my first stitch. So that can go back on there now. Then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out through that hole that I left in the side, or that hole that I made in the side. Like this. And then we need to sew that hole closed. And I'll do that on the machine. I'm not worried about doing it by hand. So pull the two edges of the gap outwards and then just simply sew straight across off the end. <coughs> and then trim back your loose threads. Bound to be some Right, now when we push the lining inside the bag, remember the lining was cut an inch longer? That means that when this goes inside the whole thing, it'll be half an inch wider. And that creates a really nice border around the top. Okay. So where that sits, I'm going to stitch across the seam here. I should have left that off. And this holds all the layers together, but it also gives a nice, um, a nice professional finish to your gift bag. So again, I'm just laying this flat. I'm trying not to let the lining section gather. So I've got quite a lot of fabric there. And it will want to kind of move a little bit. So just keeping that flat and folded over. to the beginning. Now this bag doesn't have a drawstring, it's just got a tie that goes around the top. But I do want to secure that tie so it's not going to drop off the bag altogether. So I've cut my piece of ribbon that is about 30 inches long, fold it in half and I'm just going to sew it straight over that back seam about about two inches from the top. Um, if you're not sure, maybe you're making a different size of bag, um, tie the ribbon around the bag first and just see where it's, where it's going to sit best. There you go. So there's my gift bag. All ready to have some goodies popped inside. And then this will simply gather at the top your ribbon goes around here and ties into a nice neat bow. And if your ribbon is that little bit too long, then you can simply chop a little bit off. There. Obviously when that's got something inside it and it's a little bit weighty, it's going to be nice and full. Um, but you can like, make these in any size that you like. So you could have all of your gifts all sitting underneath the tree, all in their own personalised little gift bag. Um, if you want to put some applique on the front, by the way, or around the outside, do that before you start sewing the whole thing together. So one of the very first things you do would be to sew any kind of applique. Maybe you're going to put a little row of Christmas gifts or uh, a name or a date or something around the front. And of course, it doesn't have to be just a gift bag. You could easily use that if you put some sand or a bag of rice in the bottom as, um, uh, as a handy little doorstop. 